So why do we need a baritone sax? That is the question posed today in today's video. And to start with, straight off the bat, I think it's fair to say that most people would see the baritone sax as a pretty cool instrument. And that includes non-musicians as well. It's just got such a distinctive look to it with this uh, pigtail section going on here. Never mind the sound, which alone is just absolutely fantastic. It can be earth shattering. Um, it can be quirky. It always stands out in most musical settings. So, you know, if you were to take up the baritone saxophone and you don't even consider yourself a great musician, just the joy that you can attain from playing a few notes in the low range can just be enough for some people alone. Now, when we think of the baritone saxophone, I think it can often just get pigeonholed into that whole thing of all the baritone saxophone does is chug along playing the bass line, uh, you know, going along playing crotchets or quavers, hitting the root notes and um, giving you the fundamental uh, kind of harmony in any musical setting, which it can do when it's written for poorly. But at the same time, the baritone sax can be played like any other saxophone. It's, it's a very expressive instrument. It has lots of flexibility. It can do a lot more than just mere parping, parping along playing bass lines. So I'm going to try and get into a little bit of that um, as we go. So let's just dive into the history and touch on that briefly, just to give you an idea of where the baritone came from. So in the 1850s, Adolf Sax invented the sax, as you all know, and the baritone was one of the first instruments that came out. It came out at the same time as the rest of the family, the altos, the tenors, and all the others in between. Um, initially, it was actually designed just to go down to uh, low B, and then some decades later, it was designed uh, to key down to a low B flat. And for many years, it remained uh, a low B flat instrument. And it wasn't until uh, the mid 1950s when um, Selma, with their Mark VI model, um, started experimenting with making it uh, go down to a low A. Prior to that, they actually did some odd experiments by attaching sort of cylindrical pieces and what have you um, to bottom uh, B flat baritones to try and give you that extra low A, which puts you, uh, gives you a concert C. So it's very useful for various musical schools to produce that uh, low C. And during these experiments, they realized that it was just um, an out of tune note and it was unreliable and all the rest of it. Um, so Selma took the, um, the development forward and they actually produced a genuine uh, low A baritone. And that's become the standard for the modern baritone these days. Just everything is made as a, a low A um, with very few exceptions where the low B flat is produced. Um, so in terms of its history, the baritone has been around for a long time. Um, famous brands like the Boucher and uh, the Con 12M um, are, are some of the key ones to look out for. And if we're just going to touch on some key baritone players through the ages, um, I can't do a piece on the baritone without mentioning uh, Jerry Mulligan, who was really well known in the, in the 50s and beyond and um, played through the whole um, cool jazz era. It's got a lovely, soft baritone sound. Um, and you know, played a beautiful jazz ballad, uh, just a beautiful sound. So we'll try and put a clip of him up um, so you can hear some of his wonderful playing. And then you've got the likes of Harry Carney, who was famous for playing with the Duke Ellington Orchestra. And there were many famous uh, baritone lines. We, when we think of the Duke Ellington sound, um, you, you know, we, we, we think fondly of the, the saxophone ensemble sound overall, and that wonderful baritone saxophone sound right at the, the, the foundation of it, um, just, just giving an, an overall wonderful sound that's enjoyed today by you know, um, many modern orchestras trying to replicate that sound. So, you know, he had a, a big say in, in sort of um, molding that sort of big band sound that we think of today. And it's progressed on, you know, through the decades, but that was a, a pivotal moment in, you know, defining what the baritone saxophone can do in the big band setting. <laughs> And 
And then I'm going to do a shout out to uh, Gary Smullyan, a fantastic New York baritone player, famous for playing a Con 12M low B flat baritone. And uh, the low B flat baritone that he plays uh, gives him that ability to, well, for a start, it's a lighter horn, it's smaller, it's good, the bell's going to come down to about here. Um, so that has practical implications. You know, if you are a soloist like he is and you're playing it all day long, it's going to take a certain weight off for him. But also um, the, the, you know, the, the true baritone sax players out there, you know, the specialists, um, it means a lot to them to get the, the right sound. And I think for him, he just finds he gets that, that voice that he's looking for in a B flat baritone that he doesn't perhaps find in a low A baritone. <laughs> And then in more commercial circles, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, the Doc Kupka Brown from Tower of Power. I've seen the band several times now and every time I see Tower of Power, it just puts a smile on my face because the sound of the band in general, but particular, in particular, uh, the horn section is just mind blowing. They are so tight. Um, those guys have been going since 1968, I think. So if you think about what they achieved in terms of producing a, a tight-knit, um, powerful, searing um, harmonies, luxurious harmonies, um, and, and that sound just wasn't there prior to them coming out with, you know, with that group horn sound in the 70s, it was m much more... Um, sort of minimal, you know, two brass, two horns kind of thing. And when they came in with that Tower of Power horn section sound, um, I think it opened the door for, for many more bands to, to follow suit. And then moving on from the dock, um, we can't ignore um, the much more contemporary uh, Leo Pellegrino, who is just a fantastically energetic uh, New York baritone player again, um, famous for playing with uh, too many zoos. And yeah, he's just brought the baritone out to a wider audience really. You know, he's sort of known for his in intensity and his rhythmic playing. Let's just go through some of the common formats uh, that you would play a Barry Saxon. So uh, first of all there's the, the traditional saxophone quartet which has more of a, a classical leaning to it. Uh, the baritone sort of fundamental to the sound there, you know you've got your baritone and then you've got any arrangement of saxophones on top whether it's you know two altos and a tenor or a soprano in there or whatever. Then we've got the concert band. Uh, it's very easy for you guys to get into a, a concert band. There are many of them around uh, the world. It's, it's the obvious sort of, uh, if you're gonna learn an instrument and you wanna get into a band within the first you know, year or two, um, hopefully you should gain entry to a concert band um, and sort of connect into that. In America, there's a big marching band tradition. And then occasionally you can um, use a baritone saxophone for orchestral or solo work, but it's not so known for that. And then for me, this is the tasty one. Um, using a baritone in a big band is really where its heart's at for me. It's got a fantastic sound in a big band. I've played in quite a few big bands. I've never played the baritone parts, but I absolutely love sitting along in the section from the barry player because the sound is just so fantastic it cuts through the entire big band and you know if you get a, a, a decent um, big band arrangement um, you can have a lot of fun on the barry sax uh, in a big band 
And then of course I have to mention the baritone saxophone in its pop setting, whether that's rock or funk, soul, um, it's got such a, um, a, a distinct sound in, in a horn section, you know, supporting the horn section, whether it's a two part, three part, four part or five part, in the case of Tower of Power horn section. Um, yeah, the sound is so particular and it's such a lot of fun playing it, it you know, in the context of a horn section. Um, you know, you can even use it in the likes of Afrobeat sort of scenario. I think Fela Kuti had a couple of baritone sax players in uh, his horn section, and that's a lot of fun to listen to as well. And then, of course, I have to mention Motown music, really, because, um, and that's sort of separate in some ways from the standard horn section, because the baritone would often stand alone and have quite solo-y sort of lines. Uh, we think of songs like uh, Heat Wave, it's very famous sort of protruding baritone saxophone line in that song and then all of the, the, the Motown genre in general. Um, and then you can just use it in, you know, whatever jazz combo setting you, you might want to use it in. So, you know, that, that's what, nine or ten different settings, just showing how flexible this instrument is. And, you know, and if you just want, if you are shy and you don't want to play it out and about, that is equally fine. You can just have a lot of fun with it at home because, as I say, just producing a sound on this thing um, can put a smile on your face. You know, in fact, if you are an E flat alto player, this is an E flat baritone. It's precisely one octave below the alto, so you could actually just utilize all the music you currently have. If you've got play along CDs, for example, you can just put them on, play the same stuff that you've already played on alto, and out will come the right result but one octave below so you'll just have a whole new experience if you like. Well that pretty much wraps it up from me on my thoughts on the baritone saxophone but really I should point out at this stage that although I've got an incredibly expensive and luxurious baritone sitting right here, this is a top-end Yanagazawa, they don't have to cost the earth because uh, these days you can get one for, for example, our own Sakusi baritone um, is a a few hundred pounds over a thousand pounds make it incredibly affordable and they work very well as well and then there's just anything in between you know there's a number of brands who do good sort of intermediate level baritones and then there's a whole scattering of top professional instruments like the Yanagazawas and the Salmas and the Yamahas obviously so there is a baritone for everyone out there but overall you know what this thing is just a lot of fun Thank you.